Let's give Sask a hand. I present to you our first speaker for today, Fernando. Thank you. It's okay. Um, okay, first of all, thank you all everyone for coming to this presentation. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, distributed monitoring for web applications. Just a little bit about me. I'm from Cordoba, Argentina. Uh, I'm a system administrator, mostly with Linux systems. Um, I've been working last seven years in IT companies, and um, since April 2011, working in Intel IT in our center in Cordoba. I'm uh, happily married with Jessica and father of Benjamin. Just a little uh, tip for this presentation: we would like to uh, just uh, cover the solution achieved instead of talking about vendors or something like that. Um, of course, all products used here are open source, and we would like to show how in IT at Intel uh, use these best practices. The agenda for this presentation is uh, just talk about the problem overview that we uh, had, uh, the distributed infrastructure that we are uh, put in place, the failover solution. A little bit about the web inject infrastructure and how can we integrate some API feed to our monitoring solution. Later, we can talk about uh, the multi checks that we are doing from several places and some integration that we did with uh, different kind of notification like SMS or voice over IP. Why do we need a distributed infrastructure? Okay, um, our customers uh, has more than 500, 500 service checks, and we have many of them. Also, we have uh, requirements from our customers to reach their application from several geos, like South America, Asia, Europe, and US. Every check. All checks are every one or five minutes, and we need to have some kind of redundancy or fast recovery. Why do we need a centralized dashboard? Well, um, we need to, as we have many customers uh, for this solution, we need to have some kind of accounts so each customer can only see their own services and their own host. Also, we need uh, uh, to have a fast and simple services common hand host adds updates and removal. With Nagios Core only, you can do like a fast uh, update or removal of some services or uh, configurations. And also, we use uh, MySQL Store performance data for external BI solutions. What this uh, distributed infrastructure means. Okay, as you can see here, we have dashboard and we can have many Nagios core distributed on all around the world and also have some different external monitoring providers that can be also seen on this central dashboard. How can we use to have the distributed Nagios? Well, we use the NDO to DB and NDO mod. It's quite simple to configure, just you need to, on each region, install an Agios. Um, put the server type and DB host for each of them. In the central Nagios, you have the NDO to DB going to the central MySQL. This is a simple uh, kind of distributed, uh, distributed infrastructure without uh, failover. I will show you later the failover that we are using. How quite simple is to enable a new distributed node? Okay, just you need to install. We are using VMs for all the Nagios. So you have to install a VM with the latest Nagios, an RPE or an NDO mod code, just set up 
SSH without password out for Nagios user and add some sudo writes. So the remote Nagios, uh, so the central Nagios can restart the, Nag the remote Nagios. How to enable? Okay, just create a new folder, create a new Nagios.cfg, config for that folder, create a new NDO mode config for that folder, and enable the service check that you need on that folder. As it says here, all of this could be automated with Chef or Puppet. How do you see the pullers on the central Nagios? Okay. As you see here, you have all the distributed nodes with the IP address and if it is running or not, what's the process ID of each remote Nagios, the start time on last update, and the Nagios version here. How can you see the remote service or checks in the dashboard? Okay. You see here the host and all services that this host is, has and the status of this. How can we have the distributed with failover? Okay. In this case, what we have is this central Nagios, as I showed before, and the distributed Nagios across the world. We use uh, a load balanced IP or a URL where the main dashboard is reaching to. And if uh, and we use a uh, MySQL replication master master here from the central to the failover. And we are uh, setting a, a cron job that copies Nagio, fi Nagio config files and the script files or service uh, script files from master to failover every five minutes. What this means? Okay. Um, if this master goes down, this failover takes place and this that, that uh, line comes uh, a firm line and all requests that going from the main dashboard are going to this failover and also the distributed nodes sends data to this one. We put some uh, scripts that are uh, checking every one minute the status of the master Nagios what we did here is check if Apache is running on the failover, if Nagios is running on the failover, because we need to stop also Nagios and uh, the Apache on the failover. So this load balancer also hits this master. So in the failover, you need to check that not even Nagios or Apache's running. Oh, I said the master, sorry, sorry. The failover is when we are checking if the Nagios on the master is running with this check Nagios failover and RPE command. And we are checking if the Apache on uh, Nagios is not running. If we found that the Nagios is not running on master. We, what we do is just start the Apache, start the Nagios, and send a notification that the Nagios master seems to be down. If the master is OK, we just, as I said, stop Apache and stop the Nagios. Okay. Do you have any questions so far about the distributed monitoring infrastructure? Uh, yeah. So your uh, load balancer setup, you basically have both of those. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Do you have uh, your your primary and your failover both configured in your load balancer active? Um, no, that's the reason. We are just as I said here. Mm -hmm. This load balancer is could be a Amazon ELB or a HA failover, a heartbeat 
So 